thank you for joining the Yarn Life Show for your daily dose of fiber. I'm Selena Baca, founder, host, and lead educator with the American Crochet Association. And usually I'm here with Jess Mason. She is the co-founder of the, or the founder, sorry, of the Yarnpreneur Society. Usually she's here with me, but today she is on vacation this week. So you just have me hosting all by myself today. Let's give Jess a shout out in the comments. Let her know that we miss her. Uh, that way, when she watches this on the replay, she'll know that it's just not the same without her here. <laughs> Come on over and get tangled up in this fun, upbeat, educational channel that's dedicated to the hanks, the skeins, the balls, and the kink that we love the most, and to the great people who make the most out of them, because yarn is life. Season two, which is what we're in right now, it streams live every Thursday. That's 11 a.m. West Coast time and 2 p.m. for those of you guys on the East Coast. So please subscribe to this channel and you'll never miss an episode no matter what uh, time zone you're in. Today's episode, we want to pause just for a second to say thank you to everyone watching because today's episode is sponsored in part by You Good People. Uh, check out our Yarn Life swag shop to pick up a token tea, a tote, or a mug today because every purchase that you guys make over there in our Yarn Life swag shop, uh, it helps us to not only give you guys great Yarn Life swag that you'll totally love, but it also helps us to create even more great episodes, bring on even more amazing guests. And you can find that link in the show notes section today. Also, as soon as you guys snag your swag, uh, if you want to show it off, come on over and visit us in our Yarn Life group on Facebook. Share a picture. We'd love to see. You can find that link in the show notes today. So today's episode, we are into season two, episode six. And I have six tips to consider before you buy that yarn that you feel like you just cannot live without. We've all been there. I've been there. Um, and, you know, and seriously, it, it gets me every single time you get an email from your favorite yarn company or you're browsing the this brand new yarn line in your favorite yarn shop. And we all say this, like we, we like, oh, you know, the yarn just jumped into my cart and begged to come home with me. I mean, we've all been there. We all have totally been there. However, I, I try not to do that all the time because I don't want to be a yarn hoarder. Um, I don't want a whole house dedicated to just my yarn. Uh, so today, I don't want to curb your enthusiasm. That's not at all what I'm trying to do for buying all the yarn. But I would like to give you some questions that you can ponder, some questions that you can ask yourself before you become homeless do to yarn hoarding. <laughs> if you're watching live or on the replay, come on over and comment on this video. Let us know you're here. Let us know where you're viewing from. And if you have any questions uh, about the topic that we're, we're covering today, let us know. I see Sophie's here. What's up? I see Tina Abernathy's here too. She says hello from North Carolina. And Tina, mm, she misses Jess. Jess, we miss you, lady. <laughs> it's not the same without you. All right. So I'm going to dive right into these six tips. And again, if you guys have any questions, comments, feedback, anything like that, let us know. Let us know. We always go back and read them, all right? So question number one of six of things you're, you you just opened up that new email from your favorite yarn company or you're browsing around in your local yarn shop and you see a brand new yarn and you're like, oh my gosh, I absolutely have to have this. Here's thing number one that you should consider. Okay. Thing number one, think about the weight of the yarn. Sometimes we do that. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're like, oh man, this yarn is just beautiful. And there's so many reasons we find it beautiful, but flip over that yarn label and take a gander at the yarn weight. Now consider, are you comfortable with this yarn weight? Is it much larger than you're used to dealing with? Is it much smaller than you're used to dealing with? Uh, really consider that. Now, sometimes uh, knitters, crocheters, people who buy yarn, we have our specific yarn weight classifications that we really kind of live in. Like, for example, I love weight four. That's where I live. That's my street. That's my hometown. Like almost everything that I make is in that weight four category. That's just what I'm comfortable with. I understand the characteristics of it. I know how it works up. Like that's just, that's my hometown. So when I'm looking at yarn and I pick up like a weight six, or like a weight two, I really have to go, hmm, 
Like it's a little outside my comfort zone, which could be a great thing, or maybe it's just going to sit on your shelf forever and you're not ever going to touch it. So it's definitely a question to ask yourself. Is it a weight category that I'm comfortable with? And there's a lot of other questions to consider outside of that. But again, that's thing number one. What do you guys think? Who's here watching? I'd love to hear what you think. Thing number two, think this is tip, thing to, thing to consider. You picked up that yarn, you're staring at it through your computer screen. Consider the yarn ply, how the yarn is um, constructed, how many plies it has, has, how it's plied together, and consider that ply and texture. Now, again, we're looking at the yarn, we're like, man, this is beautiful. I love it. Um, but sometimes yarn is just perfect the way that it is. And what I mean when I say that is we're looking at yarn, we're looking at this beautiful hank of yarn, this beautiful cake of yarn, and we're like, oh man, this is so beautiful. It's so, like, we are so in love with that cake of yarn, just the way that it is. We're so in love. You guys can see some over here. I've got some on display. We're so in love with it, just the way that it is, that we only think about the yarn and the unit that it's in. Like, it's its own, like, like you'd hang it on the wall and it's just on display. It's so perfect in the package that it's in. But really, honestly, think about the texture of the yarn. And what do I mean by that? I mean, take the yarn strand itself and consider how is it constructed? Is there a lot going on? Is there a lot of texture going on? Is there not enough texture going on? Really look at the strand of yarn. So look at the yarn at a microscopic level instead of just the yarn unit as a whole. Because looking at just that strand of yarn, you may think differently about that yarn. Oh, this is going to be hard to, um, it's going to be uh, hard to maybe work with. Maybe it's going to be hard to stitch up. What kind of fabric is this going to create? What's it going to look like once I'm actually working up this yarn? Um, so definitely that's something to consider. Look at the yarn strand and not just the yarn as a whole because you could totally change your mind. All right, next, another thing to consider, you're looking at the yarn, you feel like you're totally sold, consider the yarn color. Now, there's lots of different color variations, there's lots of different kinds of applications of yarn color, so really, there's not just solid and variegated, there's so many different kinds of yarn uh, colors in addition to that. So, just like the texture and how there's lots of different kinds of texture of yarn, color can help or hinder the fabric that you're making as you're crocheting it. So you want to consider the color application. Are there very tiny, short color repeats? Is the variegated uh, var variegated uh, color application going to be maybe like one color change per stitch or two color changes per stitch? Or is there 10 stitches and then a color change? Really, as you're looking at that strand of yarn, as you're holding it out, or as you're looking at the yarn, yarn unit as a whole, really think about how that color repeat is going to affect your fabric. Um, and again, there's very short color repeats and very long color repeats, just as, and then it, lots of things in between. So really imagine what your stitches are going to look like. Imagine what design that's going to work up. Um, and that's going to help. Is it going to maybe depending on what you make with it, and we'll get to that in just a second, is that is what you intend to make with this thing? Is it going to really bring out the color characteristics of the yarn? Or are those colors, is it really going to clash? Is it really going to hinder whatever project you'd like to make? So color, huge question to ask, okay? All right. Uh, thing four to consider, I see Tina's got a question over or a comment over here. She says, my go-to seems to be wait for. Same here, ladies. So she just, you know, a lot of people, again, we don't think about these things. We just see yarn and we're like, it's beautiful. I don't know. I just want it. But then when you really think about these questions, it may just help you decide whether or not this yarn really needs to come home with you. Is it just shiny and new or is it really going to help, you know, enhance your, enhance your yarn life? Okay. Thing number four to consider. Thing number four of six to consider. We're almost there. Okay. Do you have anything like it in your stash already? Um... Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Be honest with yourself. Now, for example, do you already own 10 different worsted weight for yarns in solid colors? If you do, um, is this new yarn, is that going to enhance your stash or is it just going to add to the clutter? Now, sometimes, and I'm on the fence about this too, guys. I really am. Like, you know, buying yarn and having yarn, like it, it's a completely, it can be a completely separate hobby than actually making things with it, whether you weave or knit or crochet, it can be a completely separate hobby, but 
maybe it doesn't need to be. So maybe just think about what it is that you're adding to your stash. What kind of stash do you have and why are you accumulating this stash? So if you, again, let's go back to that example. Do you already own 10 different worsted weight four yarns? And if so, what are you doing with them? Do you enjoy working with those yarns? Why do you have this stash? Maybe you're a hobbyist, maybe you're a professional. Maybe this new yarn is in a color that you don't yet have and you really need it because you're making something particular that you need in that color. Um, maybe you only have solid colors and maybe this new yarn is in a variegated color that you need to really kind of enhance your stash. Maybe it's a completely different brand and type of yarn, but maybe it looks very, very similar to what you already have. And so really it's just going to be a surplus, something that you don't necessarily need. Not really a return on your investment. It's going to be something that you're going to be taking home and it's going to be sitting there. So really think about what you already have and think about again, is this new yarn going to enhance my stash? Is it really going to, you know, is this something that I'm going to use that I'm get, that's going to spark joy? Or is it something that's just going to add to the clutter? Am I going to buy it and bring it home and forget that I have it? That's thing number four that I always ask myself. Thing number five, thing number five. Now, this is something that if you are not already doing, your life will be so much better if you start doing it before. I tell you about number five. I got to give a shout out to Courtney, who's here. Hi, Courtney. We forgive you. She's late, but we forgive you. You're Courtney. So you just, you know, anything for you goes, it's fine. We could never be mad at you. We're just happy that you're here. <laughs> okay. Now we're on to thing number five of six. Uh, things to consider before you buy that new yarn and bring it home. Thing number five is check Ravelry. Check it. I'm telling you people, this will change your life. We're looking at the yarn. We've already thought about a few different things. We've thought about yarn weight. We've thought about ply and texture. We've thought about color. We've thought about whether or not we have anything like it at home. Now we're going to check Ravelry. Of course you're going to check Ravelry. Ravelry is an excellent resource to find new yarns. That's a great way for you to actually find new yarns because maybe you don't follow every single yarn company that you love in a way that shows you what all the new yarns are. Ravelry is a great resource that you can see this um, this consistent stream of new yarns that are added. Ravelry is brilliant. Everybody's on, everybody's on Ravelry. If you're not on Ravelry, you are the 1%. 99% of other, of everyone else uh, who loves yarn is on Ravelry. So what do I mean by check Ravelry? Well, Ravelry is wonderful in that you can go to Ravelry and you can click on the yarn section and there are wonderful things like you can find just the new yarns. So you can see what new yarns are here. Maybe you've already found that new yarn, but you want more information on that yarn. You can read reviews about any yarn that's posted there. Who else is using this yarn? Did they give it a rating? Ravelry has a wonderful five-star rating system to where you can clearly see how people rate oh. something. <laughs> Goose agrees. My dog Goose agrees. You can clearly see how something is rated, including any information. This is why live is amazing. Live is best. <laughs> there are leave, leaves rustling in the front yard, and he's not having it. Guarantee you guys. Yep, Courtney loves it. Do you guys have dogs? I, I can't hear you. My dog is so loud. I, I can't hear the typing. Yep, okay. All right. Maybe? All right, he's done now. Okay, wonderful. This makes it so much more fun. Yep, okay. So not only not only can you find those new yarns and see the ratings and see why people have rated them that way, another amazing feature is that when you're looking at these new yarns, you can actually see if anyone has made a project with that yarn. Are there any patterns that were made specifically for this yarn? What does that look like? You can also see other patterns that maybe weren't written for that yarn, but people use that yarn to make another pattern that you would have never thought of to make with that yarn. You guys are going to give me bad reviews just because my dog is yelling. I can feel it in my bones. Jess is cursing us right now. I leave and your dog barks the whole time. Yeah, this is wonderful. Goose is so excited about Ravelry. He is so excited about Ravelry. Yeah. So anyway, you can go and you can clearly see, has anybody used this yarn? What projects have they made with it? <laughs> I love the lie. 
time. Um, so it gives you clear inspiration. Goose agrees. Clear inspiration. It gives you clear inspiration. How do these colors work up in a fabric? How does, uh, what kinds of projects are people making? What projects are going to be best for this yarn? Uh, you may see a yarn and you're like, I don't know what I would make with this. I just love it. And then you click on over to Ravelry and it's like, oh, everyone's making cowls. Of course they are. Everyone's making baskets. Of course they are. Or, wow, this yarn is really diverse. People are making pillows. They're making sweaters. They're making slippers. You can see how diverse a yarn has the potential of being. Now that brings me to number six. That brings me to the sixth tip that I have for you guys today on things to consider before you buy that yarn. You may be to the point to now you're convinced. You're like, all right, the weight's great. The texture's great. The yarn color is great. Uh, stash, maybe I don't really have it in my stash. It'll really enhance my stash. I've checked Ravelry. I'm totally inspired. Now you may be wondering, okay, what projects am I going to make or how much of it should I buy? That's the question you ask yourself. How much of this should I buy? Should I buy every color? Should I buy more than one color? My advice to you is if you're still kind of unsure, maybe you've seen the array of projects that it has the potential of being, and you're still not really sure, I would say buy one skein. Find one skein projects by one skein, maybe two, maybe. If, you know, really the bet it's really worked up best uh, in a project by having two skeins, depending on the yardage of it. If it has a whole lot of yardage, just stick with one, one cake or one little skein or something like that. And the reason is that if you actually take this yarn home and you actually work it up with a pattern that you love, that you found, you're going to make something that you're really excited about, you're going to use just the yarn that you got to make that one thing, that one skein project, that one cake project, that one ball project. And you're going to clearly see, all right, I, I'm so glad I bought it. I love it. I made something that I'm really excited about. Wonderful. I didn't just add to my yarn stash. It's giving you just enough to try that project to see, you know what? I loved this yarn. I was all excited, but you know, I'd, I'd never, I don't need to buy it again. That, that was it. You know, I made my one thing and I'm perfect. I'm great. So just, you know, allowing yourself just that small amount just to make one thing or just to use one unit, that's really going to help you not only in that moment, but it'll help you make better decisions in the future. Next time you see a brand new yarn, you're going to think about everything you thought about before you bought yarn last time. And you're going to go, you know, I did all that work. Okay. I asked myself all these questions. I made the project. And next time you buy a yarn and you're looking through projects and you go, you know, I don't really want to make another cowl. Um, I don't really want to, you know, I think this yarn is going to be great for, a, you know, uh, some kind of garment or some kind of wearable, but I'm really not into that right now. So I love the yarn. I appreciate it, but not right now. So it's going to be great, not only for that purchase, not only for that one purchase that you have right there, it's going to be great for any other purchase. So the more you go through these six questions to ask yourself before you buy that yarn, it's going to better prepare you. It's not going to totally curb your enthusiasm for new yarns, but it will help you to uh, guide yourself through better purchases. So again, nobody wants to be homeless because their house is filled with yarn. So that's kind of where it's at. All right, let's see who's here and what kind of questions you have. Tina says, I'm on Ravelry and didn't know about finding yarn on Ravelry. Yes, ma'am. So go to Ravelry. There's that big bar at the top. One of those links up there is yarn. Click, go, have fun. It is so much fun. You can totally get lost. It is amazing. Courtney says, yes, we have a female Labradoodle named Kevin. Female Labradoodle named Kevin. She protects us from leaves too. So you guys understand. I hope everyone is a dog lover in the audience and just, you know, yep, yeah, yeah, Tina says your dog is cracking me up. Okay. Yep. We have comedy and yarn here at the Yarn Live Show. We certainly do. And Courtney, thank you. She says Goose is super excited about Ravelry. If I mention, yeah, if I mention Ravelry too many times, he'll just, he'll just yell from the top of his lungs because he's so excited. Yeah. Sophie says always too, if it's a normal size skein, LOL, sometimes definitely consider, you know, see what the potential is for the yarn based on the yardage and, you know, what it has the potential of being. And then just maybe d decide to make one project based on one skein or one unit or maybe two units, depending on what the potential is and see if you dig it. Uh, Courtney says, unless like me, you have zero willpower, you have to buy 
at least two. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I do too. Sometimes it's very hard to just buy one. But again, if you just, if you want to arm yourself with better questions, if you want to come home with not less yarn, I'm not trying to say don't get the yarn. I'm just trying to say I would love for everyone to have purpose and potential and or to have purpose whenever they buy yarn and to understand the full potential of yarn so that they can make the most out of it. This is all about enhancing our yarn life. Uh, let's see. Simone says working at Joanne's takes a lot of self-control, but I've run out of space at home. So that helps too. I, J Simone, I wonder if it feels like that is your own personal yarn stash sometimes because you work there. You always know what's in stock and you can always like, you know, when the sale is, you know, when you need it, it's going to be there and all that stuff. Uh, Courtney says, yep, Kevin is a girl. I love it. I didn't know if I misread that, but I absolutely love it. Awesome. Jackie's here. Hey, Jackie. Jackie says, I usually buy the new yarns if the price is right. Well, Jackie, definitely consider all these other items too, because sometimes if a yarn checks all these boxes for me, I'll get a yarn even if it's not on sale. But I'll tell you what, Jackie, every single time I've only bought yarn on sale, this happens to me. I don't know if it happens to you guys and it makes me feel so bad. I'm like, yay, I spent $30, but I saved $30. That yarn is left in the bag and then I don't have room for it. So it goes in the closet and I have all these different yarns and the yarn stays in my closet. So that kind of hurts my feelings sometimes because I'll buy yarn that I don't even know that I bought. And then it just you know, it goes to live in my closet. So that happens to me. Courtney says, oh no, I should definitely shop with more purpose. You know, if you want to shop with more purpose, I'm not shaming anybody, but if you would like to shop with more purpose, hopefully these tips help. Uh, Jackie says, I still haven't bought sheep, chic sheep yet can't afford it. Um, Jackie, this could be, and you know, definitely go through all of these tips here. Definitely go through all these tips. I know that Marley has worked so, so tirelessly to put together fantastic free patterns for you to try that yarn. And I think that yarn is a fantastic yarn that you could try if you have the right project. So maybe you just buy one skein and you make something really um, delicious just for yourself. That yarn is perfect to make like a cowl or some mitts or, uh, you know, an ear warmer or a hat or something like that. So if you want to try a yarn alternatively, but you're not entirely invested in, in, in anything particular about that yarn, then maybe find a project that you could try that yarn with because then it could absolutely be worth it. Simone also says, yes, I always wander down the aisles and touch all the yarn when nobody sees me. <laughs> and of course, Simone works at Joanne's. I bet that's wonderful. Mary is here. Mary, thank you for joining us. She says, just showed up. We'll watch replay for sure. Uh, I hope you enjoy our dog segment. <laughs> and Jackie is the last comment that I see here. She says, I know it's definitely worth it. It's great. Wonderful. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. And now that you have some guidelines to ask yourself before you buy that brand new yarn, I want to invite you to become a yarn master. Does that sound exciting? Sometimes we're like, I am a yarn master. I own all the yarn. But, 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 but to become a yarn master, it means that not only do you have these questions in your yarn knowledge arsenal, it means that you understand so much more about yarn. You understand characteristics and fundamentals and fibers and weights and colors. Uh, that's right. All of those things. And the American Crochet Association is a 12 course learning path to crochet mastery, including yarn mastery. And of course, that begins with that fun foundation in yarn knowledge. I've got quite a few ACA members who have gone through that yarn mastery course right here. And I think they've had wonderful things to say about our program. If you have gone through this, please let us know in the comments. Courtney says it's kind of like being a Jedi master, but better. Amen, sister. I felt the exact same way. So from yarn weights, types, fibers, colors, care, and more that the ACA, the American Crochet Association, it does provide fantastic lessons that will help you master yarn with confidence. The American Crochet Association is absolutely dedicated to helping crocheters help themselves with a program that allows you to easily adopt crochet education into your life in really fun, really quick, and meaningful ways. So you can learn more and give it a try today at AmericanCrochetAssociation.org. We would love to see you in our program. All right, any more questions before or comments before we call it a day? Mary just says she loves animals. I hope you do because, oh boy, do we have a segment for you being a Jedi master but better about 
being a yarn master. I love that lady. Uh, Tina says, I'm learning. There is always more to learn. That's right. There's, you're never done learning. You're just never. Courtney says, yep, ACA rules. Thank you, lady. Tina Abernathy says, I absolutely enjoyed my courses. We were so proud to have you a member. And Tina also says, and I've been crocheting for 40 years. You know, that's beginning to be one of our taglines. We hear people say all the time, you know, I've been crocheting for 20 years, 10 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. And when I joined the ACA, I thought I knew everything, but there was so much I didn't know. So we just love hearing things like that because it helps our members build a better foundation and really be proud of what they already know and enhance uh, and build more knowledge. All right, everyone, that concludes today's episode. What did you think? Let us know in the comments. All right, please don't yell at me about my dog yelling. I'm very, very sorry. Uh, but hopefully you guys are dog lovers and you loved it. And you had a little giggle, giggle out of it. I would love that. Now, please come on over and join us again for episode seven of 10 as we outline another great topic for everyone who enjoys the yarn life. Uh, of course, if you celebrate... Uh, the holiday, the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, we will join you in that celebration next week, so we will not be here. So please join us the following week for the next episode of the Yarn Life show. Remember, today's episode is sponsored in part by you amazing viewers. So please check out our Yarn Life swag shop to pick up a token tea, tote, or mug today. Every purchase that you make there helps us to create more great content, more episodes, and bring on even more amazing guests like Goose. See, that's what you get when you don't get a tote. You get guests like Goose just yelling at us in the background. I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> you can find our shop link in the show notes section today. Browse around. If you get anything, please share a picture we would love to see in our Yarn Life group on Facebook. It's a wonderful community. We'd love to see you there. Thank you for joining this episode of the Yarn Life show for your daily dose of fiber. Peace, love, crochet. We will see you guys next time.